Hello, welcome back. So, in the last class, we discussed about uh, uh, the importance of uh, sensors and sensing and how this can actually be used for uh, giving a perception of the environment to the robot. We saw that uh, most of the uh, autonomous robot or all the autonomous robots need to have a, a capability of perception of its environment and without this uh, perception, the robot would not be able to do any of its task. And uh, sensors play a major role in uh, collecting information and then this processing of this information helps the robot to have a clear uh, perception of its environment. So, today let us look at uh, the sensors, some of the important sensors that are used in uh, mobile robotics and how these sensors are being used in order to collect information from uh, uh, the surroundings and under various uh, uh, situations. Okay, so, when we talk about sensors for mobile robots, uh, we will be looking at the classification of sensors. So, how the sensors can be classified? There are different uh, uh, type of sensors, so we can actually classify them under different categories. So, we look, look into the that one, how do we classify them? And then we look at some of those performance characteristics, characterization of the sensors, because sensors need to have some performance characteristics. So, we will see what are those uh, important characteristics that we need to understand. Then we look at some of those sensors which are commonly used in mobile robots. Okay. So, some of them are for the environment, some of them are, them are for the robot itself, I mean for its own information. So, we will talk about uh, the wheel and motor sensors of the robot, then the heading sensors, accelerometers, inertial measurement unit, then ranging sensors, active ranging sensors, then the motion and speed sensors and then we look into the vision sensors also. Since some of these sensors are already uh, familiar to you, I will not be going into the details of each and every sensor, we will tell you the basic principle and then how this is, uh, how these sensors are used for getting information from the surroundings. So, that is going to be the uh, discussion in this class. Okay, this actually shows uh, some of the uh, robots with uh, different kinds of sensors. So, you can see uh, a large number of sensors may be needed in uh, uh, mobile robots that may include the cameras or uh, you may include the proximity sensors, then uh, floor sensor, etcetera, etcetera. So, there can be different ways of uh, looking at the problem. So, some cases depending on the use of, use of the robot, you can have some kind of uh, toxic gas detector also. So, that de depends on the application of the uh, robot. Again, this is another example for uh, mobile robot with various kinds of uh, sensors. Okay, so, let us talk about the classification of sensors. When we uh, classify them, we classify them into primarily into two categories. One is to get the information from the robot itself, from within the robot we want to get some information. For example, the wheel speed is an information of the robot, temperature inside is an information about the robot. Or the, what is the velocity at which the robot is moving again, it is an information uh, from the robot. But there are some other information we want to collect from outside. What is the, is there an obstacle uh, on the path or what is the, uh, the temperature outside or what is the humidity outside. So, there are many things which we can get from outside also. So, we can classify them into two categories, one is for internal information, one is for external information. So, we classify them into uh, two uh, categories, one we call as the proprioceptive in sensors, the other one is extraceptive sensors. So, these are the two uh, kinds of uh, uh, or two categories of sensors that we can have or two classifications. So, the, the proprioceptive, they measure the values internally to the system, that is motor speed, wheel speed, heading of the robot, battery status, etcetera. So, this is basically the, uh, the proprioceptive sensors. And the other one, extraceptive sensors, basically uh, information from the robot's environment, distances to objects, intensity of the ambient light, unique features, etcetera. So, that is coming from the environment. So, sometimes the same sensor can be used for both applications also, there are uh, various uh, uh, combinations possible, because some de again depending on the robot, uh, we may require some information from outside the environment, outside the robot, some may be from inside the robot. So, whichever uh, sensor is used for measuring the internal values, we call them as proprioceptive and whatever is uh, used for out outside information is known as extraceptive sensors. And another way to classify them, the uh, sensors is basically through 
based on the energy that is uh, passive uh, sensors and active sensors. So, in passive sensors, the energy is coming from the environment. So, the robot does not have any energy, sorry, the sensor does not have any energy source, the energy is coming from the environment. In the other case, the active sensors, the sensor emit their energy and then use that one to collect the information. So, this, the, the difference between these two are one is emitting an energy and then using that to collect the information, the other one is just getting the uh, energy from the environment and use that one for uh, collecting the information. So, we will see some examples. For example, if you have a, a, a range sensor, a laser range sensor, a laser range sensor will send a, a laser signal and use that signal, uh, that energy to get the, uh, that reflection and then use that one for measuring the distance. So, that is actually an active sensor. So, some sensors will uh, emit energy, some will not emit. So, the, the which one has got uh, uh, its own energy and emit energy we call it active, the other one is known as passive sensor. So, these are the, the two uh, important classifications, one based on the uh, uh, application or how it, where it is used and for what purpose it is used, the other one is whether it is has got an energy or not, its own energy or not used for sensing. Right? So, uh, EC or PC, we can check whether it is an extra receptive sensor or a proprioceptive sensor and active or passive. So, you can see whether it is active or passive. So, for example, tactile sensor, a tactile sensor is used to find out the contact, physical contact or how close it is uh, to a uh, object, uh, obstacle or an object. That is basically the tactile sensor or a proximity sensor. So, they are contact switches, bumpers, optical barriers, etcetera, etcetera. So, they are all extra, extra receptive because they are used to identify the uh, environmental parameters or environmental data is collected using this one and some of them are passive, some of them are active. So, for example, contact switch, it is actually a passive one uh, because there is no uh, energy is emitted, something touches it, then it will give a, a signal. So, it is actually the external uh, source itself is giving a, a information to it without giving any, giving out any energy. But the optical barriers provide an optical signal and whenever there is a break of that signal, that is used for measurement. So, then it is a an active one. Similarly, non-contact proximity sensor, they will actually emit some signals and based on that uh, signal only you will get. So, it is again active uh, sensor. And coming to the wheel or motor sensors, so mobile robot uh, as you know, we in the kinematics uh, you might have uh, studied that we need to understand at what speed the wheels are uh, rotating. And uh, if you know the wheel speed and the radius of the wheel, you will be able to calculate how much the robot has traveled and that can be used to identify the position of the robot. So, that way we will use many uh, wheel encoders uh, in order to get the wheel motor po speed and position. So, we have many things like brush encoder, potentiometers, synchros, reservoir optical encoders, magnetic, inductive, capacitive. There are many uh, encoders, so some of them are active, so these are all active. But potentiometer is not an active one because it actually depends on the environmental input for its uh, sensing. And these are all uh, proprioceptive because these are all used for the internal information of the robot. So, it is a proprioceptive uh, uh, sensor. Similarly, heading sensor, heading is basically the orientation of the robot, how much it is oriented uh, with respect to a coordinate frame that is basically known as the heading. So, that can actually be obtained through compass, gyroscope or inclinometers. And uh, see, gyroscope is a PC that is for the in, in, internal information, but compass is basically uses uh, uh, external magnetic field information and then pro tells you what is the magnetic field. And based on that, you actually decide what is the uh, heading of the uh, robot. So, these are passive and this is a, it can be an active or a passive one. So, inclinometers can be either active or passive depending on the, the principle used for designing the inclinometer. So, like this, you can see there are uh, many sensors uh, normally used in uh, mobile robots. They can be classified into EC, PC or uh, active or passive uh, sensors. We will go through some of these sensors, but not all the sensors we will be discussing. Again, you can see the localization that the GPS, uh, beacons, they are all active. Okay, then you have this uh, ranging. Ranging is basically finding out the distance to obstacles or, uh, in the surroundings. So, you can actually use various principles, time of flight, geometric triangulation, etcetera. 
and they are all active because they are all emit energy in order to get the information and again they are all for external information so it is easy. And the motion or speed sensors like Doppler radar and the Doppler sound uh, again active and the cameras so basically passive so it won't uh, emit energy but the light energy falls onto the camera so it actually gives a signal so that's why it's a passive one camera is a passive uh, uh, sensor and it's an ec uh, type okay let us now look at so th those were some of the uh, sensors and then the, uh, we saw the classification uh, before we discuss about the uh, about the few sensors and their uh, working principle let us look at the uh, character characteristics of these sensors. So, based on the sensor uh, uh, performance, we can identify many characteristics. So, one is basically the uh, sensor response. The sensor response, uh, the uh, one parameter is the dynamic range. So, the dynamic range is the ratio between the lower and upper limits, usually in decibels. So, that is basically known as the dynamic range of a sensor. So, what is the uh, range that the sensor can measure? So, that is the uh, I mean the range of uh, values between which it can measure. So, you can see which is between 0 0.001 to 20 can be measured then we call this as a 43 uh, dB uh, uh, range, the dynamic range. And the normal range is basically the upper limit of measurement that is basically known as range. In this case, it will be 20. You can see this 1 milliwatt to 20 watt will be 43 dB, but its range is now if you simply ask this is 20 watt is the range of measurement. So, the dynamic range is uh, measured in uh, decibels. And then uh, we have the something called resolution. So, resolution is the minimum difference between two values that can be detected by the sensor. Of course, these are not specific to mobile robots, but uh, since we are discussing about uh, the sensors used in mobile robots, I just need to I tell you all this because uh, uh, if you choose a, uh, a sensor which is not matching with the requirements of uh, sensing in that particular uh, environment, you may end up with uh, uh, erroneous data or useless data. So, we need to know a little bit about the uh, response ratings also. Okay. So, the lower limit of dynamic range is the resolution. So, if 0 0.001 we normally we call that as the resolution. Okay, for it is usually the analog to digital resolution in the case of digital sensors. See 8 bit or 12 bit like that we tell. So, that is basically the uh, analog to digital resolution. Linearity is very important. Uh, the variation of output signal as a function of the input signal. If the variation is linear, then we have it is a linear uh, measurement, but if it is not linear, then we need to know what is the relationship in order to. Uh, get the output from the sensor. One important uh, uh, characteristic is the bandwidth or the frequency of the uh, sensor. This tell you, tells you that at what speed you will be able to collect the information and uh, uh, if that is, if that is sufficient for your uh, uh, application. The speed with which a sensor can provide a stream of readings is known as the bandwidth. Okay, usually there is an upper limit depending on the uh, sensor and the sampling rate. So, many times you will say it can use 100 hertz that means you can have 100 cycles per second we can have the data collection or the variation can be 100 cycles per second uh, for that particular signal till the uh, sensor will be able to uh, catch the uh, information. But if it is uh, the signal variation is much more than that then you want the sensor will not be able to pick up the uh, data. Okay, so, normally we will be having a, an upper limit for the uh, bandwidth. So, normally we talk about it can up to 40 hertz, uh, 100 hertz like that. But for the case of acceleration sensor, we will no, no, put a no, lower limit also. We want that uh, less than that the robot sensor will not be able to uh, pick up the information. So, this bandwidth is an important one then we need to know how the uh, signal is varying. If the signal variation is uh, if the if we know the, the frequency at which the signal to be measured is varying then the sensor need to have a, a bandwidth which is matching with the uh, signal that is being measured. Okay, another one is the sensitivity, the ratio of output change to the input change which is uh, straightforward, but cross sensitivity is more important. The sensitivity to environmental parameters that are orthogonal to the target parameters. So, you are trying to measure something 
but if the sensor is uh, uh, responding to some other signal uh, which is orthogonal to the measured signal then we call this as a cross sensitivity. So, the cross sensitivity should be very uh, minimal uh, for sensor sensors so that we will get the correct measurement of the data. And then error and accuracy, so the difference between sensors output and the true value is basically known as the error and the accuracy is 1 minus error by the true value. So, that is basically how you define the accuracy of a sensor. So, error is the, just uh, the measured value minus true value is the error but accuracy is 1 minus error divided by the uh, true value. Okay, so, this is uh, uh, more important for the uh, mobile uh, uh, robots because these are the uh, uh, characteristics which are very relevant to our uh, real world uh, uh, situations. Uh, most of the time when you take a measurement there will be errors and these errors can actually be classified into two types of errors. One is known as the systematic error, the other one is known as the random error. So, what is uh, the systematic error that uh, I am trying to measure a distance. So, I am having a uh, wall here and I am using a sensor to measure the distance from uh, from here to here I am trying to measure the distance. Now, if I uh, uh, use the sensor I am making 10 measurements I will be getting uh, 10 readings. So, we do not know. Uh, depending on the uh, sensor and the, uh, the situation you may be getting uh, various values. But this error uh, some of the errors are uh, uh, very systematic or we call it as deterministic that is it is because of the calibration of the sensor or we did not uh, calibrate it properly or there was some error in the uh, settings that actually led to the error in the uh, measurement. And such measurements can actually be such errors can actually be controlled or we can actually co compensate it by properly doing a calibration of the uh, sensor. So, such errors are known as the deterministic errors which can be modeled and which can be corrected. So, we call this as the uh, uh, deterministic errors and uh, calibration of that will actually avoid these errors. So, that is something which cannot uh, avoid uh, completely but we will be able to calibrate the sensor over a period of time and if you use the sensor over a period of time you will see that it degrades and then you do a recalibration then the sensor will be again working uh, perfectly fine if the error will be less or the accuracy can be increased. But there are uh, some other errors which we call as random errors or they are called as non-deterministic errors. So, it is very difficult to predict these errors. We do not know why it is happening. Maybe uh, many things are there. Maybe the environment is affecting, the temperature is affecting, humidity is affecting the per performance. We do not know. And such errors are known as non deterministic error, which cannot be really uh, overcome by calibration or anything. Okay. So, no prediction is possible for such sense, uh, uh, measurement, uh, such errors. So, if I make, uh, if I get uh, 10, uh, make, make 10, uh, 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 measurements and I get 10 readings after calibration I can actually bring down the uh, variations to uh, to some level. But then still I will see there are some errors still existing which I do not know how to uh, control it because there is no way to uh, it is not a calibration error it is not a deterministic one it is known as random errors which cannot be avoided. So, it no prediction is possible for such sensors. So, you cannot really predict the uh, errors and they can be only described using probabilistic methods. Okay, so, we need to go for some probabilistic uh, estimate of the uh, error and that uh, will give only a probability, probability only the, the type of error that can be that may be existing. So, this is one of the major challenges in uh, uh, using sensors in uh, mobile robots because I am using this sensor to measure the distance and if I make uh, 5 measure 5 readings and if I get uh, 5 measurements how the robot can actually decide which one is correct or on what basis the robot will take a decision. So, I can only say that if I take me 5 measurements I will be able to get a, a, a distribution like this. So, the mean value so the mean value will be somewhere here I can say and then I can say oh this is the, the standard deviation that you can uh, find. That much only we can model using probabilistic method, but we do not have any 
uh, real value mu. So, because the, the distance what is measured can be here or it can be this or it can be this, Any can, anything can be there, but we can only say that in a probabilistic way we can say okay, the mean value is mean is this and the standard deviation is this. And uh, most of the sensors that we use comes up with this problem. So, there will be always a, uh, a non deterministic uh, error in the sensors and this actually makes the life of a, a, a robotic uh, engineer very uh, uh, miserable because uh, these uncertainties cannot be really overcome by the, uh, the design and it has to be addressed through other methods only. So, this is one big challenge in using the sensors for perception process. We will see how this can actually be addressed as we move forward. So, the precision is basically defined as the range by sigma. Okay. So, the reproducibility of sensor results. So, if you have uh, uh, a sensor which actually gives you too many uh, readings, then we can only say that what is the precision of the instrument. So, the precision of instrument will be the range by the sigma. So, what is the range that it can measure and what is the standard deviation that will give, give you how precise is the uh, sensor that much only we will be able to tell. Okay, so, I just mentioned about uh, some of those sensors and uh, the uh, performance characteristics. So, let us see what are the uh, main challenges when we use these robots for uh, perception. So, as we know that we are using it for perception. So, when the robot has to perceive and analyze it interpret the state of the surrounding, uh, measurements in real world environment are dynamically changing and error prone. So, all these readings are error prone. So, whatever the sensor you use, no sensor is 100 percent correct. The sensors will be having uh, their own errors. So, how do we actually uh, uh, take these errors into account while doing the uh, perception process? So, the changing illuminations, reflections and uh, if you are having uh, some light uh, absorbing or sound absorbing surfaces, all this will lead to errors in the measurement. So, it is very difficult to predict uh, what will be the measurement because uh, again any changes in these factors will cause a uh, error. And then as I mentioned the cross sensitivity is a big issue. Okay, so, it is very, it appears as a random error and uh, systematic errors and random errors might be well defined in control environment, but this is not the case for mobile robot because uh, in a control environment we can uh, model it as a, uh, I mean even the random noise can be modeled uh, well, but uh, uh, in the case of mobile robot we are doing a, an environment which is completely unstructured, it is very difficult to do this in the process. Okay, so, that is what actually the problem is. And how do we actually overcome this? We go for uh, multimodal error distributions. Okay. So, this uh, random errors as I mentioned, it is very difficult to uh, predict. So, what we do? We do the distribution. So, we actually predict them as uh, uh, random distributions or we uh, predict them as uh, probability distributions. And then, uh, what we do? The probability distribution is assumed to be symmetric or even Gaussian. So, Gaussian is the, the white noise distribution where we can have the mean and standard deviation by standard uh, representations. So, we can actually predict it as okay, this is the way how the uh, random errors are. Need not be always, but we will just say that okay. So, we have a mu and uh, we have a sigma. So, I can actually find out the, uh, I can distribute, uh, describe this by a, a probability density function. So, that is basically how we model the error, but no this can be wrong. Okay, so, it need not be always correct, there can be a lot of uh, errors in that one. So, those errors will not be really taken care of when you make such an assumption. Okay. So, this is where we need to go for uh, uh, multimodal uh, distributions or we need to go for multi sensor uh, data fusion in order to uh, overcome such uh, uh, errors in the even in the uh, distribution models. So, normally as I mentioned the statistical approach is basically you get this uh, the mu as a uh, function like this and we will get the variance or the sigma square for that uh, function can be provided when you have a probability density function. Okay. So, we can actually uh, predict this as a I mean you can actually show this as a distribution function the random errors and then say that 
okay, the mu of this is like this and then sigma is sigma square is given by this and therefore, the E x can be or the, the density function or sorry the mu, mu, mean value can be obtained and similar, therefore, we will have a, a good probability distribution for the ro, uh, sensor. So, every robot, every sensor will assume a variance and we assume that it is um, a Gaussian distribution and uh, once we have that one, we can use something called an error propagation model to identify the extent of uh, 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 error in an estimated value also. So, what does it mean is, uh, suppose I uh, uh, use, uh, let me see whether it is there. Okay, anyway, I talk about this uh, error propagation uh, slightly later also, but uh, what we do uh, in the error propagation is that, suppose I uh, use a, a sensor to measure the distance, the robot is here and I use a sensor to find out its distance y from here, okay, what is the distance from to this and then based on this distance measured, I try to find out what is the x y position of the robots. So, now I know if I know y, I will be able to get x as a function of y. So, some relationship is there. I can find out the position x if I know y. So, that I put this x is a function of y. So, if I know y, I can actually get the x. Now, the problem is that I am using this measurement and then getting the y. So, y itself has got an error. So, when y has got an error, there is an error delta y in y, okay, I cannot say delta y, it is a random error, it is a, a distribution. This random error is there in y. When I estimate x, x also will be having an error in x also. So, what will be the error in x if there is an error in y? So, I need to find out what will be the error in x if I know the error in y and that is known as the error propagation model. So, we will be able to predict the error in the estimated position of the robot if there is an error in the measure, measured value uh, using the sensor. So, that is basically the error propagation. So, we need to know the error in the sensor and then what is that error doing or what, what kind of effect that error has got in estimating the position of the robot. So, we will have an additional uh, error coming into the positioning of the robot because of the error in the sensor. So, first thing is the error, how do you actually model the error itself and then the effect of that error in the uh, uh, estimated position of the robot or estimated parameter, any parameter, the position or some other parameter you are trying to estimate. So, what is the effect uh, of this error on that one also need to be understood. So, this is the way, I mean this is, these are the uh, difficulties or the, the challenges in using sensors for estimating the position of the uh, robot or estimating the uh, environmental parameters or getting the perception of the environment and giving that information to the robots. So, with this uh, background, let us uh, uh, look at some of those sensors that are used and what are the basic operating principle of those, those sensors and then see how each sensor is leading to errors and how these errors can actually be compensated by either by uh, uh, probabilistic approach or by using some kind of uh, uh, sensor fusion where we can use multiple sensor data and then use that information to uh, reduce the estimated uh, error in the uh, robot parameters. So, we will see that in the next class. So, tomorrow we will uh, uh, look at the various sensors and then try to identify the, their performance uh, uh, parameters and uh, the principles of operation. Okay. So, thank you very much. We will uh, meet the next class. Thank you.